Hi, this is Neil Malik with Knack Training, bringing you another everyday office tutorial video. In today's video, I want to show you two different ways to use partial text in an XLOOKUP function to try to find matches for things in other tables. Here's the first example. Over here on the left, I have a fulfillment ID in which there is a very simple and understandable structure. There's a transaction ID number, a client ID number, and a product ID number. And if I look at this, I can easily see that there is a combination of dashes in this text that shows me where the product ID number would be. And for that matter, I can also see that the product ID number makes up the last few characters at the end of this ID number. And so because of this, I can use functions like write and text after in order to split off things like PR1200 or PR2200 and then use that here on the right side to identify the appropriate product. Let's see that in action. I'll click here in cell AD6, and I want to use the XLOOKUP function to retrieve that PR1200 is the product called Dionysus. So I go to the Formulas tab at the top of the screen, I use the Lookup and Reference drop-down menu, and choose XLOOKUP from that drop-down. Now, the problem is that the lookup value that I'm trying to use isn't good enough yet. This fulfillment ID number over here on the side is just not going to work for me. But as I said, I can either use the text after function or the write function, depending on how I want to approach this problem. Let's say that I'm pretty sure that my product ID numbers are always going to be the last seven characters on the right end of this text. If that's the case, I can go into the lookup value field and type in write, open parens, and all I need to do is specify what the text is and how much of it I want to get. So the text is in cell AB6, and then after the comma, I want to specify the last seven characters are the thing that I'm looking for. As you can see here, it automatically detects that that first entry is PR1200. And now I can easily go to Lookup Array and highlight all the product ID numbers in the AJ column. Remember to press the F4 key on the keyboard in order to lock those references down and I want to use the return array field to bring back the product name. So I'll highlight AK6 through AK25 and press my F4 key. As you can see, the result for the first entry is the product called Dionysus, and so I can click OK and autofill this down, and I should get appropriate matches for all the IDs but what if it's a little bit more complicated than that? Can XLOOKUP go in a different direction altogether? Over here on the right-hand side, in columns AT through BB, I've created another scenario. In this situation, we have a truly disorganized and frankly dirty set of data. We can see that instead of being able to see any product IDs or product names in this column right here, I instead see a lot of extra text and then interspersed in there some of the product names with a lot of text around it. So how can I get the product name or the cost of the license for these products if I cannot guarantee where this text is in this whole setup? Well, here we have a combination with the search function. The search function is a function that says, if you tell me what text to look for in another chunk of text, I'll tell you what the numeric position of that text is. And what a lot of people do is they combine it with the function isNumber. 
And basically what that says is if the search function does return a number, meaning it finds the text in there, then it comes back as true, and if it doesn't return a number, it comes back as false. So it's another way of saying, hey, is this text inside of this other text? Now we have the added problem of saying, I actually need you to go over to this big table of all the products we have on the right hand side and go through every row and ask the question, is this product in the text in that AV column? So XLOOKUP can be combined together with a logical function to figure out which rows these things match up with. Here's how it works. You go to cell AW6 here, you go to the formulas tab at the top of the screen, use the lookup and reference drop down menu and find XLOOKUP. Now, it's interesting here, what we're going to be looking for, we want to have a match for something, but we don't actually want to have a match for any ID numbers or text or anything along those lines. What we want is to say, hey, does it match up with basically true, basically does the text exist? So what we do here, if we want to say, is this row true, is for the lookup value, we put in literally just the number one. The number one is another illustration or another way of communicating the concept of true. Zero is false, one is true. So if we're looking for one, how does that work? Here's what we're going to do. We're gonna go into the lookup array, and now we're going to get our hands dirty a bit. We know that we want to search for all of those product names in the order description, and we want to know, did it match up with anything? So we use the isNumber function, and then open the parentheses, and type in the search function and open the parentheses. Now at this point, is number is simply going to say true or false, is this thing a number? So what we really want to edit here is the search function. We wanna fill this in. Take your mouse, click on the word search up at the top of the screen, and you can see how the search works. It says, what text are we trying to find and where would we find it? Now we invert what we normally do in this situation. I'm trying to find all the product names. So in the find text field, what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight all the product names here from BA6 to BA25. Now I'm going to autofill this sometime in the future. So make sure to press F4 to lock in that reference. And what I want to do is I want to see if I can find any one of those product names within the text over here in cell AV6. So this is using the part of the XLOOKUP function that is a dynamic array function that says, can we look for cubics? If we don't find cubics, can we look for a crew X? Can we look for brain clip? And just keep going through the entire table. Now we're going to come all the way back to the XLOOKUP function up here in the formula bar. And the one thing we're going to do now is we are going to put in front of is number here, we are going to put two dashes. By putting two dashes in front of is number, we're going to take all of the number values, right? Remember the search is either going to return a number value or nothing. And then is number is going to ask a true or false question. Does that row exist inside of this data? And then by putting in two dashes, we are going to convert that into its number result which would be one or zero. Now, besides those two dashes, the only other thing you've got to do is you have to make sure that it understands that that whole thing is completed. So right down here at the end, you may have to add one more 
parentheses. And you see that right there. Now, inside of curly braces, I have 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. And so this is informing you that it's doing the work right now. It has gone through and it said zero, cubix is not in that text. Zero, a QX is not in that text. Brain clip and Toriox and Teolo are not in that text. But then when it got to the row that said team chat, it found it. So all we've got to do now is go to the return array and highlight all those same entries in that column. Press F4 to lock it down. And when we click OK, we get team chat. And when we auto fill this down, we get the remainder of the values. Now, I did set this up specifically with two major problems in it. The first of those pretty easily right here is the NA return. You see here that somebody typed in the name of our product incorrectly, and so it didn't find it, right? If, hey, if you spell the name wrong, you're not going to find it. And then the other one is right here, where I actually have an order description that contains two of our product names. And you see here, of course, uh, it only returned one match. It, anytime you use a lookup function, it's always going to do the same thing. Return the first perfect match for whatever it is that you're looking for. In this case, if you notice, the products are called Burst, Interchange, and bright swipe. And right now, interchange is here in the list, burst is here, and bright swipe is down here. So it ran into interchange first in both of these two examples. So it wouldn't be able to help you in this situation. You'd probably want to use something like a filter function to resolve that issue.